ex in game leader of the Astralis boys. Familiar with the majority. He's got him to this point. A big win from Nuke and a big win from Chris J's clutch that otherwise could have made it look like a very different state of affairs. Dupree spots a couple on the cross. He just runs across, drives by, hopes that that does draw attention. But look at the call here. A fast smoke and a quick run up long. Oh, I like this. I love the pace. It's caught the rotation off guard and Glaive's out of position. He's under pressure. Ooh. Trying to get out of dodge. Evade. Getting swung on. He's done well to evade it's all 4B. of that hunting. And they're coming in with a four-man stack. Astralis are actually on the right place at the right time. And the nades are doing damage now. Glaive's holding them at the e arm's length. Starting to advance now. Glaive's made this so much work. Finally rops a war of attrition. One, Carrigan caught off. And two oh. for Magisk. Nearly on to Bemis as well, but it's not done just yet. Bomb's loose. Dupree's working on the banana push. But look how passive they're playing. There. They're not giving Bemis anything to move. And look what happens when you do. He's hit the goosh, wants to apply some pressure, and that's it. That's their exit strategy. They don't have the bomb, but they now know that the majority likely are on that B site. Drops will drop a weapon. Four bullets. Zipex has a full 12. Now reloading the clip. Peeking into Mouseport's aim is scary stuff, and you can see why Rops manages to make it a 2v2 now. This was a four versus two. And these boys, Bemis and Rops, more than oh. capable, taps away at the head. They know where Magisk is. He hits it, and he knows the other's there, tagging him away. Oh, and Magisk just makes a pistol round statement with just the one HP to spare. He saves his team from a catastrophe at the hands of Rops. Great stuff from Magus. He had huge impact on their nuke CT pistol and doing it again here on Inferno. That's a big one for Astralis. They almost lost that. There was very good fragging coming out from BMS and Rops in tandem. It felt like they had done enough. There was only a few bullets left in reserve for Magus if he had to reload. I think it was four in total. So he wouldn't have had a lot to duel with if he had gone down and pinned down towards dark. It would have been no easy feed. As Mal's gonna bounce back immediately with a four spot. It's a Galil, a Scout, two Deagles and a Tech Nine. And Zipax, well, wow. he's flooded down banana. He's taken a lot of room. I'm surprised they haven't gone for the deep smoke. It seems that they'd they actually... They went even deeper. T-stairs. T-stairs? <laughs> yeah, well, at least this means that if they wanted to flank, someone has to keep their eyes on banana. The smoke... Oof. That'll be enough for Zipex, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe let's uh, not pick that one again. That Galil is quite scary. He's so low B right now. You really don't want to be dying on a jump peak. Didn't he just push down with an MP9? They've traded weapons mid-round. Good He's point. Now onto an M4, left with a smoke. And um, that excuse me? Is one way to entry. Frag it's with a scout, no less. Madge is caught by Chris. What the hell was that? It looked like a little flick. Didn't get to see it from his POV. They are advancing B and the rotate from oh. Glaive to join them. Look how quick and early Zipex used his smoke. It didn't feel like he was under much pressure, but he's already dropped the top banana smoke. That's about to dissipate. And they'll just start grouping up on the back of this. Feels like a B. Looks like a B, and five members of Mouse about to flood in. Zipex has an M4. He has to get good use out of this, has to get value, and has. Taking down the first two, it was actually Glaive through the smoke that makes it even more awkward. They was isolated by the Molotov. And Zipex, this is exactly what they asked of you. Giving him the M4 has paid dividends. Now, device tanked by the scout does want to get away and let the hell of Zipex finish the job. Perfect. Triple kill from him. Glaive gets the double, and Astralis convert the second round force. So now sports will have to swallow the uh, their pride a little bit here. Might be a P250 or a Desert Eagle if you're feeling frisky. Rops is. Okay, I want to I want to go into this one thinking it'll be clean, but after the things I just saw on Nuke, maybe I should hold my breath. Let's wait and see as Astralis are able to keep this clean. They need to build a bit of a bank, and when you consider their CT side on Nuke, they were whittled down time and time again from Mouse. They made almost every single round close until they eventually broke the dam, and here yeah, they've kicked it off very well. Rops straight onto Magus. That's another opening. Magus has gone down early in the last two. Hero of the pistol, the first to fall. Straight onto Frozen. He's yet to find a frag, and now Device is taking space. Like that. Still two towards Banana. Carrigan kept on notice there. They don't have any utility to work with. It's just bodies they'll be throwing. And they're betting out utility, and there's the bomb. So Device, with his aggressive play, has been able to take out Chris J. Left on his lonesome in alt mid. Bomb drops. Didn't quite get the bounce off the smoke he was hoping. Carrigan just pushes into the hurt locker. Dupree peeking down middle. Bemis has used this nicely to recover the bomb without contact. 
coming up from the underpass, but he is alone and with an unarmored P250, one can assume. Oh, he might get a timing here. Let's see if he wants to clear off towards the window room because I don't know if Device has realized he's lost the bomb. If he gets the plan. He's going to get a plan out of this. <laughs> no way. He actually is. No way. <laughs> Making as little noise as possible. Crossing Ooh, into heard the now. Sight. Yeah, it makes sense. Dupree might try and wallbang it. Ooh, I think ooh. he's got it. Oh, what a just plant. in time. Bemis in a 1v4, no armor pistol. He's managed to get the bomb plan, and that's going to really fill the coffers for Mouse Sports. That's $800 each extra. That might get under my skin a little bit as well if I'm on the Astralis defense, because you knew that you were operating with four players still alive, and he somehow found the gap, somehow slipped the net, and given his team a bunch more cash to be working with. Still well handled and clean. Clean in the sense they don't have to upgrade too many weapons here. <laughs> Chris now just... Uh, I don't know if he's given us a glance or maybe the second monitor, but regardless, I'd love to see some more magic moments out of him. Yeah, as soon as it looks... I mean, next time I see Chris J in a, in a clutch that's just never supposed to happen, I'll just make sure I call it. Because the man does like to uh, bend the expectations of the masses. CTs doing something a bit different this time. You can see how late they are arriving to A. I like this though. It's Mouse Sports taking the space, knowing that there is a tendency for those three man banana leans. And look at the gap that they found. This is fantastic. The smoke's about to clear. Dupree might get a rude shock. What a shot from Device. Dupree wins his duel as well. And that's two early casualties now for Mouse to overcome. Dupree's pushing in. They want to take that long control back. They want to peak brackets from long, and it's perfect. Frozen won't be caught. And Carrigan's starting his advances. There's a gap, and he's found it. Look at that frag. Glaive goes down. Zipex has to stop that plant, but Carrigan's working on the flank fast, and Zipex not had the greatest Civ series. So far, so good, though. Needs to take a lot of damage. Does inflict some to Bemis. It's not enough. Carrigan's so flashed, though. He's practically a dead man walking. Now, just a dead man dying. Two on three. Astralis have the numbers, but the bomb is ticking. Mouseport's in pursuit of their first round. Magisk from CT. Look at all the smokes. Yeah, they're going to push it. They got a flash. They got a boost. I kind of hate it. Magisk's not going to be ready for this, though. There should be a trade, and they know exactly where Bemis is now. That's the issue. He had to get up there from with help. It has to be Paul. A flash evaded. Device caught by it. Oh, he could win this. Bemis caught by Device, and they've got a defuse in time. Dupree on it. Mouse sports, that was one of their best bets so far. And it's come up, device 4K retake. I, I like the fact that Mouse Sports did a lot of their action there unannounced, but it meant that they had a lot of utility as they were getting taken down. Unfortunately for them, not able to use the smoke gimmicks to their favor and device with four in the round. We do need to acknowledge that that was a three versus five though, and it That's came true. down to the nitty gritty again, bailed out by the retake of device and his fragging prowess, but. That was a well overcome from Mouse Sports. They managed to catch those picks, that contact walk in. I think Zipex just taking the jiggles on Coffin didn't catch the, the slip of the net of Carrigan. This could be a classic Mouse Sports set piece. Lots through second middle. Device oh. hit a great banger on Rops and Apps, by the way, to start that round off. Good nade. Great nade. I thought they might be setting up for something very early here, Mouse Sports. They were the ones who came up with that fast alt mid execute where they just really drive it home onto A, but up they go. Smoke up middle. Device smoked off. Quad very fast. Magus, he's got to do some damage. More nades coming in. Into the site goes Bemis, and he's looking for a frag. He's found Dupree. They found some space. Astralis are held at bay. They have to play around the smokes. Magus is still alive in the pit right now. It's Dupree up to, excuse me, Device up to, he's just on the Vespa. Finally gets knocked off it. Ooh, a bonus. Magus gets to keep hold of his smoke, and Zipex has actually burned one down. Bemis does not manage to save himself. Christo, with just 17 HP, jumps into the flames. That's a double kill on the Zipex Molly. You rarely see something get so much value. Can he finish the job, though? He's just walking up through the smoke. There's a wide swing. Can't hold, and now Mouse Sports find their first. It's a product of a lot of team effort. Almost everyone getting a kill there. Contributions from Chris, twofold. That was still quite quick. It wasn't spawn based. It wasn't completely on the fly, but they've dropped similar smokes. Smoke towards the pit position. That held Magus get bay. Smoke over towards the mini pit so that the wrap is difficult. You saw how powerful by having graveyard presence from device, it meant that that molly had so much value on Zipex. They couldn't just run out of the site and, and play graveyard pit. 
and almost drown there for Astralis, I guess. But they've been caught off guard by the pace here of Maus. And let's see if it slows down or if it continues forward. Deep smoke towards Banana. I think that one's just missed. Maybe even a gap as Device has found Carrigan. A good entry. They're going a bit faster up mid now. Bemis is making good ground. Heavy rotation from Astralis coming too. Ooh, Magic's a bit indecisive and it could cost him. They're pushing everything. He's going to find Dupree on short and it is Frags favoring Astralis. Only Frozen and Rops remaining and caught on the wall bang. Magisk has done great work, great value out of his position there. He tags up Frozen, unconfirmed damage. Astralis have, have kept the pace change completely under lock and key and it is going to be another clean round from Astralis. Four bodies left standing. They might grab a couple of AKs if they can reach, can't in time. So you might, sports. yeah, you might be questioning on why they just kind of ran in that way. Why they just went, oh, let's get over to A as quick as we can. Well, it's because of this kill right here. Device traditionally an A holder. When you see him over towards B, it's pretty clear that they're doing a three-man B lean. So that rotation straight up towards A was to punish the timing of Astralis, but they held strong. And oh, we've got a couple of fans on the fan cams here enjoying what they're seeing. Sports might have to slow it down and try and play out some more isolated jewels, see if they can use ROPs in the same way they did on Nuke, just peppering towards ramp, really harassing a key area of the map, the map with his mechanical ability and procedural clears. There we go. We've seen someone not flub the jump there, Alex. There's been a couple of times that uh, teams have been falling off on that balcony dive, giving away a couple of sound cues. Smokes to work with again, AKs and Deagles. So this one still could be a very dangerous round for Astralis. Especially with Rops being one of those AK-47s. Another smoke towards Halls. That will hold him back. Mouseports oh. are throwing out a couple of their own now. People smoke onto the balcony. Looks like we're about to get this one underway. Yep. It's a full five-man commitment into four. And Rops using that smoke. He's throwing it so precisely. He has the one-way Zipex. That damage, that destruction. That's against two of the better weapons. Rops is still holding out hope for a device frag, and with one click of his mouse, he finds it. Short-lived celebrations. It seems that Dupree plans to win the round right there. Just a double on the remaining brackets. Control that Mouseports were holding on to, and a sixth round on the board for Astralis. Just seven rounds in. CT side getting off to a flying start, starting to nurture a bit of a bank account as well. That was great from Zipex. Nearly got all three. All right, looks like Debris getting fired up. Trying Even to the get smiles that, on the that land mindset back. Nice! Oh, Magus has opted in just with an MP9 here and no utility. He might have been expecting a low buy. Regardless, he's barreling down middle. And Carrigan has been caught with nades in his oh, hands. That's a yikes from me. That's a punish. That hurts. And he's even perhaps got the AK upgrade. He's going to run through the flames and disappear on Banana. That's a loss. Oh, God. A must be wide open, right? You've just seen Magis charge down middle. Robs has just killed your A defender. Dupree, Zipex, Glaive, Magis. Everyone's a bit paranoid. Dropping the incendiary and tucking into pit. Dupree gives them time to fill their lungs with some air. Less stressful now. There isn't the immediate punish to the death of Device. Same smoke worked well. Astralis have called this. Glaive jumping for info. Nothing banana still. They throw a smoke on a smoke and Rops one waying. Not this time. Dupree punishes it perfectly. And oh my MP9. god, he's got another. A deliberate MP9 finds a double kill in the round. And coming back to B is frozen. Glaive's been given the forewarning. He jumped over the AK. And Glaive, careful, bro. Yeah, very careful. Oh, Frozen's got a chance here. It's minimal. He's burning. Nine HP and a Glock headshot gets um, him a chance. He's got enough time to get the bomb down here. That's something. Glaive's going to be kicking himself. He just didn't expect the charge so fast. Is there anything left for Frozen to contribute? Whoa. He's missed his molly. Means Dupree can push in. And Dupree hitting another headshot. Double kill for him in the round, but seven for Astralis. Mouse Sports looking a little absent. The opening stages of our third map here. Great stuff from Dupree and Magis. The fact he charges down here. Let's see Carrigan's death, because that's a death puncher right there. Yeah, you're not happy with that whatsoever. And him getting away is even worse. It's like, well, he ran all the way down mid, he killed me, and no one was even available to trade. I cannot believe that kill yeah, <laughs> right. right there. <laughs> I'm just taking a look right now back at the series in Pro League where uh, Mouse Sports picked up Inferno 16 to 6. 
They started on the CT side, Alex, and they won 14 to 1 on their CT half. So, wait and see when they swap on over. We might have to start calling it if Astralis get 11 or 12 rounds, but if Mouse are able to get 5, we might be happy with that, knowing just how much of a haul they put in back in October, I believe it was. This one's slowed down, looking more like a default spread utility yeah. towards Top Banana. Mouse is about to get pressured, though, and I think he's thought better of it. Astralis very mobile on the CT side. They're always trying to hedge their bets in favor of the Mouseport's commitment, as you would expect, but doing such a great job of it. Now, that just to be tested. Good nade. Softens him up. This is the retake of Banana, and there's nobody pushed up. Nade does great damage onto... Oh, God, the partnership. It was Zipex's nade, and it's Zipex's bullets that finished the job. Does Device fancy himself? A little wall bang. There's only 45 seconds left, and there's two towards Banana, and now two coming back from second mid. They need to clear this, and they can't. Device just gets one and disappears, evaporates. It's perfect. You take a shot, you fall back, you take another line, you force them to continue to work. Just with one less man. Okay. So, with 20 seconds, they have to be coming. Zipex knows all he needs to do is just slow them down and unloading his magazine in the flash. Device does catch one. Late arrival from Banana. There's Rops to come as well. Oh, good shot. Rops delivers space and a chance. Two versus four. The nade damage is so great. He managed to avoid spraying down Frozen's one HP remaining. So, the two of them, the highest fraggers from the squad on Nuke, looking to clutch up against all odds. And Glaive's been ooh, brought down to five. It's not low enough. Frozen does have an AWP, but it doesn't get him far enough. Rops needs to clutch. Glaive's low. And he can't hit the shot. Great stuff. They've got time. Astralis will make an eighth. Good damage there from Rops. Good attempt as well. Even pick having, picking up the AWP to give the device again. So not having to expend too much on the repurchases of Astralis. But Mouse Sports will be taking their first time out just to discuss their options. So we've seen early pace out of them when they try and snowball onto that A bomb site within the early stages. They've been able to get ground. They've been able to make it messy, but it hasn't paid off dividends so far. Just the one for Mouse Sports to discuss what the bloody hell is going wrong and what can we make go right. Their purchases, not fantastic, as you can see here. They haven't been getting a lot of kills. Carrigan with one, three apiece for Bemis and Chris J. Five for Frozen and ten for Rops. This is much more familiar as what we were seeing on Dust 2 to Look kick this series off. how successful Mouse have been in those bomb plans, though. I mean, admittedly, a couple of them were the Frozen or rather Bemis 1v4 yeah. one. Yeah, sure. Still, it's helped them get a bit more cash and stay threatening. Yeah, well, the threat, unfortunately, has been rather lopsided. It's Rops, who's definitely been uh, capable of making things a little awkward for Astralis. Device is going for something a bit aggressive here. He might even go for a second mid look. Decides he wants to hold the, his ground. There is a timer on this. The second mid charge coming in from Frozen and Chris, and that'll be enough for Device to back away. Drops his incendiary as they even jumped across to make sure that AWP wasn't going to hit his shot. Hello, Chris. Okay. Very quick up into middle. He's going for one of these smoke gimmicks like they tried on the first gun round. Second smoke means he doesn't want to hang around for another 20 seconds. Easy, Deve. Frozen's peeked into him, and not bad from Frozen to have such a tight line against the AWP. He does, brings him down to 27. It's just not enough, though. Needed to be the kill. Chris J's working on the flank. Device can hear him. He's just hoping that this is enough. Priest called off guard. Yeah, he can handle this. Gets the first. Carrigan, though, has been spotted. That's the bomb on his back. Bemus and Rops are working. Banana, Device, and Magisk have to stay on A. This is a, a round that Carrigan can really play with here. They're going back to A. And Zipex through CT spawn practically confirms it. Magis digs into pit. Bemis and Rops walking on up. Device is low, but he's orping on a site, and that'll be very hard to deal with. Unless Kerrigan's got a smoke for pit. Magisk might not be able to contribute so much anymore. Crossfire established. They're coming up short. Device doesn't miss. Magisk reveals, and the crossfire is just perfect. Rops hits a banger. He's finished off nicely. So, triple kill from Device on that site. Can't come near him. It was Frozen that brought him so low, and that could very well have been the difference maker, but time out time, and I don't blame him. 
This is a map that Mouse Sports have had some great success. You said a five map spree from Mouse Sports on Inferno. Yeah, uh, four or five. Four or five. Like, yeah, 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 very, very close. But regardless, it's been big wins. Um, they've been able to take down big. Last night in a 16-4, they were looking very, very good in that performance there. That was the third and decider as well. And I don't know if they're out of options just yet, but a lot of their plays, a lot of their moves just haven't been working. They've been losing a lot of these opening duels. And that is really not going to sit well. When they have the max loss bonus currently, it means it's probably a partial buy. But this is round 11. Australis have a chance to get double digits here. They've kept the money kind of honest. So take a look at Australis. They haven't built a huge bank. It's the most... The top end's 4850. And the bottom end is Megas down to 650. So it's just going to take a round or two for Mouse Sports. If they're able to keep this one competitive, get another plant. Make sure that this bank can't be built from Australis. Then they could be on for five. They still could walk away with five rounds in this game. Oh, great shot. Using the smoke device, takes out Bemis, and now the execute will be set up onto A. Going back over towards Banana was Carrigan. He just wanted to pick up whatever nade was off of his corpse. Throws out one to keep device at bay. It's a four-man A lean right here. Okay, look at Magisk and Rob standoff. This is going to feel weird. As it fades, Magisk is going to have to adjust. Oh, or is he? Throws his smoke into the toes of Rops. They're coming up short. And that works wonderfully. Matt just cannot ask for more. He just transfers. He knows there was a cheeky Rob's hiding in the hidey hole. Smoke buying him just enough time to hold his line for the short push. Great stuff from Magis. Great stuff from Astralis. Our sports are looking a little bit lost. And of course, it's not the first time I've said that. They managed to bring that new game home after a similar dominant start from Astralis. But it would need to see, as Chad highlighted, into the final four rounds of play, Needs to be mouse sports. Needs to be the 10-5 half. Cannot afford to give Astralis such a clean room to maneuver into their attack. That's very nice. So Carrigan's taken not a single lick of damage. Already taking up a lot. Oh, oh, I spoke way too soon. Nades, Molotovs arrive and deter. The smoke on the half wall meant he couldn't have support. He had to respect it. Backs away. More nade damage onto Bemis this time. Look how much utility Astralis have had to drop, though, just to deal with that. Glaive and Zipex now just operating with a smoke each and one flash. So the mollies, the nades, they've all been thrown out because there were so much pressure. Unable to get that banana control they were hoping for. And that's information for Mouse Sports, at least. Sure, two players are operating with very little HP. The first misread I've seen from Astralis. Yeah, they've gamble stacked B. Top mid's taken now. Megas playing another naughty... Little line through the balcony towards Boiler. We could have a multi-spray down as Chris is trying to line up his smoke. He will get it off. That puts mid to B in question, but there's going to be a huge gap. He's Terrible, flooded. Terrible, yeah. And now Chris burning. There's two mollies there. Device sits the shot. Suddenly, again, Astralis have taken the early lead. Is he really peeking into that? That was crazy stuff. Carrigan already walked up, but a double from Magisk materializes. He's under a lot of pressure, even nading himself in that. But Frozen and Rops, things getting awkward for them, and Magisk makes it even more so. Catches another. Where the bomb is now. Yeah. How does Frozen win this? There's no way in for him. Here's the reload. No Magisk has got himself a fresh mag. Could get the graveyard angle, certainly. That's the first. Even Zipex coming up from middle. Frozen has 10 seconds, so the bomb plant is... She faked out. He wanted a frag, and he does oh, yeah. get it onto Dupree just as the final frag comes in. The plant actually would have been better. He might not have been able to get it down. They might have run him down anyway, but if he was able to get that, there would be enough money for them to operate with with a better buy. Now it's just going to be another half purchase or Galil's in lieu of AK 47. So you can see here, as soon as he tapped that, they were on him. So regardless of what he went for there, it wasn't looking good for Mouse Sports. And I think they're the face of Chris J. It's not the one we saw after he hit that absolute banger of a clutch on Nuke. This is so much more like Dust 2. The middle map, potentially a bit of an anomaly here in the series, is unless Mouse Sports are able to have a massive CT haul like they did last time, a 14 1 CT side on Inferno last time these two teams met on Inferno. Just feels unlikely at this stage. Another half investment from Mouse Sports as we do hear the tactical timeout music playing. Scout for Rops, couple of Deagles, Tech 9, the standard kit and caboodle. And Astralis, they'll be buying on in with all the goodies. 
Device might want to take a pick here with the AWP. Sees Rops towards T-Stairs, thinks better of it. And he'll just scope up towards the end of Halls. Mouse Sports look like they want to head for a bit of a B piece. Dave towards top banana. Throws out his utility in exchange. And a smoke from Mouse now. That's going to allow them to at least corral their forces behind it and take control of half of banana. Off of this, they have two options. They can either set up the smoke and go from behind this and be very, very quick about it, hoping to catch players off guard towards sandbags. Wait this out, clear the top and execute into Astralis, who are so good at holding onto their nades. And look at this. We're a minute into this round. They have all five HEs. They're still rocking four Molotovs. There's a bunch of smokes. They have everything to defend against this. It's perfect from Astralis. Yeah, they just held onto all of the goodies. Now it's time to drop them. Oh, Dupree's taking a couple of risks on the flashbang there, but the nade looks good. And oh my God, look at the health bars. They're just rotting. The remaining members of Mouse. They could swing into Zipex. Dupree keeps his partner in crime safe though. Ooh, maybe the uh, pusher up to a tree will catch off Magisk. Device is just going to tuck into that T-ramp, and that's perfect timing. Here's the pin pull. Bemis only gets the one, though. And now trapped in. Frozen. Likely to peek into Device, and doesn't hit the one dig necessary. Oh. Gets a bit messy. Able to strafe and move a little bit more erratically with a 5-7, and it does make it hard for Frozen to hit that shot. So 12 is already found by Astralis. It seems that... Losing Nuke has incited some rage. I'm surprised that Mousewatts were able to get so much room here considering all that utility I was talking about, but potentially just the pacing catching them off guard. As, yeah, it's the sweat being wiped off the brow. They managed to put the 12th on the board, and as we move forward into this, maybe Mouse just need to continue with the pace, continue with the in-your-face counter-strike as Chris J. He steps up to the plate, Device on the other side, and, well, Device hits him for six. He's going to get traded. Carrigan's... Fantastic to take that room, take that space. And now over towards A they go, knowing only two defenders are there, they can have a two on four. Two three, solid start. Making things awkward for Rops and oh wow, more than awkward. He's actually gonna nearly tag out B Beamus. Down to 61 on the bomb retrieval. Carrigan working on his apps push and low. Okay, kind of hinging here on Carrigan and his pre-aim onto Magisk's spike position. Oh, he's revealed it. Just as the smoke fades, Magisk has been playing balcony actively any of these rounds, so you can't blame him. Bemis. All too aware of the potential for a flank, Carrigan 2. Oh, Glaive punishing them here. So quick. Look at this. How did he clock that? See you later. Immediately saw them pull, falling back and just sweeps into middle for a free double frag, AK upgrade, dream package deal. Last round of this first half, and it's practically over. Astralis have just managed to find 13. Just after Mouseport's doing something similar to Big Plan. It's a real shame to see this one simmer out, especially after how high no, Nuke right. took us. That was an absolute banger of a performance. A great game. Lots of individuals stepping up, but opening kills have been a problem here for Mouseports in this first half. Device has been destroying them. And look at this. Look at this. He's got the Dak Dak, the Doom Hammer, the Auto Sniper. Call it whatever you want. I think if they go outside, they are going to feel its wrath. Oh, Carrigan, you don't know what you're in for, mate. You don't know what you're in for. Look at it go. The damage. Oh. Device onto Carrigan with the Dak Dak. It's a sign of the times. He's got the incendiary. Magic's going to be calling for assistance. A flash is good. We'll likely want to peek off of that, but Molotov's going to force his hand out. The setup is so strong. And this time, Rops wins his duel. Bemis into the site. Device ducks, but Bemis hits the necessary headshot. Finally, looks like Mouser got oh. this one, but Dupree with a dunk. Oh, and he's taken another. It's not great. They suddenly lose all of that 3v3, falling to Chris J once again. Now, not the AWP. We know what he's capable with that, but this one just, just a little bit more nippy. Maybe he's got time. 45 seconds to maneuver around. Zipex is the B player, so he's got a pretty safe assumption as one arch or library side. Bombs on short, and that's knowledge in Dupree's pocket. Would he have time to run B? He would do. He's left the AK that was just there, so he's opting to keep the scout. He's given it a shot. This will be heard. 
Will it be bitten on though? Zipex is going to rotate over. He will beat him there. And Zipex even has an incendiary, dude. Uh, sorry, Chris. You're going to have to run through this, mate. And uh, Zipex isn't holding it. So he's actually giving him the plan. Unless he pushes fast. He is so quick. A nice pace from a Zipex there. It doesn't quite deny the plant. Chris is happy to at least... I don't know. What am I talking about? It's the last round of play. I was trying to find some <laughs> sort of silver lining. It's 14, folks. 14 to 1. Inferno is all Astralis. Comebacks. Yeah. We've seen some crazy ones in our time. A fair few. It's not happening, is it? Nah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. I can warm up the car now. You want to do the rest of the show on your own? No, I'm Gucci, man. I, I've got a, a sneaking suspicion that Astralis might get us out of here quick. I might, I might throw a little bit of a, a stat line at you here. Device was flawless in opening duels. Now, he wasn't involved in one or two. He was involved in eight. Holy moly. Eight opening duels in the opening half. Device was able to uh, get the better of the Mouse Sports members as we kick this one off. Utility, two members, Glaive, Zipex, they're purchasing on in. Everyone else with Kevlar and those Glocks. A couple of decoys. Mm, throwing Vegas one out fast top yeah. mid. We're seeing them getting used a little bit more and more frequently. 
Thank God Chad's not your in-game leader, otherwise he'd bite your head off. Well, yeah. Decoys just... are useless. Stop buying them. If I didn't call Save a strat... Save that $50, you idiot. If I didn't call a strat with a decoy being a part of it, it will be useless. Uh-huh. Well, it's in the bush, Chad. That's really well hidden. You didn't think about that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> 16th right. round of play. This is our 16th. And yes, they are trying to make it look like a convincing beat. It feels they're very convincing paired with a couple of real shots and steps. The fact that you have to calm that out. Yeah, guys, they threw two decoys banana. <sighs> what a nuisance. Yeah, I have to say that out loud. But God they, damn it. They are walking into a mouse ward stack. Flashes could be good from Chris here. They are setting up a trap here. A mouse trap, if you would. I just heard a smoke B, so they all have heard that too. Doesn't seem to deter them at all. My God, they are about to charge into a meat grinder. And Glaive has been bomb. spotted. Ooh, that the wasn't bomb. the bomb, but that is the util. He wants to try and drop his smoke as fast as he can towards library side. Or Lurk Smoke Balk as well. Mouse Sports, you're in all the right places. Molly forces Rops into the corner. Oh no. I need a flash. Oh, oh no. it's such a good flash. It's not the double they needed because Chris Jay's just taken what? over. What was that? His flashbang and his fragging has given them the second round. Bemis just confirms the formality of it all, but I want to see that one again, please. Yeah, where was Chris getting those kills from? I was all focused on that pit jewel. Zipex must have had a kill completely blind Flash, there. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, like, it looked great. I think they actually flashed that mini pit hide, hidey hole. They had two members there. Here he is. Oh, simple as you like. Not Oh, <laughs> simple as you like, says Chadney. Well, when they're not looking at you and falling out of the sky, Alex, they're always the easiest yeah, ones, Yeah, you'd right? have clicked your finger right uh, there as well. quick, definitely yep. 100%, that quick. percent, man, I have no doubt. You should have seen me in that one on 4 e one I would have made it uh, even quicker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Carrigan's not had a great game as we take a look at his stats, but I mean, that's just redundant at that point. All right, well, let's uh, consider the fact that Astralis are giving them a third round just by going for these glocks. They want to bring the AKs out in round number 18. Well, they've uh, potentially overcooked the pot here, Chad. Are you ready for some actual analysis from me? Here we go. It's a question. So okay. it's not real analysis. I'm asking you a question. Mm. But have they perhaps over overdone it on the SMGs, especially because of Astralis' choice to go eco? They've kind of outplayed them by losing this round. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of options. Once Mouse Sports realize what type of buy they were up, up against, they need to identify how they want to approach that gun round. Now, with the SMGs, you could use it in a... So you can't really bonus when Astralis have 14 already. Yeah, it, it doesn't... Obviously, it doesn't work in, in the same facet, but if they have a set piece in mind, mm -hmm. or the way that they're able to at least go into the round with some confidence, we could be talking a four-man banana control with the SMGs. We could be talking up close and personal towards the boiler room window or even towards halls. You could do a four-man stack close mid, but it will have to be a gamble. You're right. There's no way that they're going to be operating with uh, full rifles. I don't think they'll be upgrading into those. Dupree's got the bomb, A, hey, and he's making noise. <laughs> Look how much restraint they're showing. <laughs> Finally, the bomb's been spotted. Carrigan says, uh, the bomb's alone top mid. And Oh, we found the banana players. They're charging towards me. They need to die. Yeah, that's what they're working on, but they've actually managed to but kill. No, 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 there's only 20 seconds. They need to die, and they need to die quick. Oh, shoot. You've just made a very solid point here. Don't shoot them. Yep, Don't away. shoot them. Don't shoot them. Oh, no. Honestly, just run away. <laughs> run as far as you can. I've never seen it. Garrigan's made the call. Hide. They can't even plan. Run, run, run. Okay, Zipex does well to die without a peg in it, and Astralis are about to screw the pooch themselves. He's just desperate to kill me. Kill me. And Magis, he gets the bomb down. He might even take one with him, but yeah. He's the only one to be punished at the end of that. That is hilarious. I haven't seen that in Counter-Strike before. Seeing CTs charting away from an eco. Oh, uh, wow, that's hilarious. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's even putting a smile on Mousebot's face. Uh, that was <laughs> <laughs> well, Magus guy, he's, he's only down he to... He did so well. Astralis did so well at actually dying there. I can't believe I'm... <laughs> I'm that's my analysis. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Now, the conversation prior to that comedy show was yeah. that the bonus SMGs, though you invested heavily, will likely have to be kept. So, Astralis, they've got an advantage here. He's up Frozen. Oh, Frozen takes that fight. That was brave, and they've baited him into the fight. Now Magisk wants to punish. Oh, trying to stop the retrieval. Magisk is the one that deserves it. He's recovered it. Makes it from his fallen comrade, but an early frag is exactly what this bonus round would have needed. And Frozen wants more. He's not quite done. Even his speculative shots are doing oh. good damage. Look at the health bars. Stralis being stretched thin. This one's going to taper on out for a moment. And imagine bo uh, imagine the bonus round from Mousebots getting upgraded with five AK-47s. That would be a one way to start a comeback. If they can keep this one clean, 
they can really punish Astralis here, who with the 50 seconds left on the clock have two men hemorrhaged. The walking wounded Glaive and Magus go over towards Archside leads Glaive. Dupree's with him. Dupree's found the head of Chris. So they've leveled things up. There is a chance for them to swarm over towards the A-bomb side. The arch smoke is an indication that at least they're having a look in. Glaive's trying to wrap. That smoke's going to deny Glaive a lot of info. And you don't want to be gray screen walking through. It does feel like that's the cruel reality of it all. Bemis confirms he was looking that way. 20 seconds. They're going to have to disrespect that molly. Yeah, Dupree's just lost half of his health on the push, but it doesn't stop him getting the frag. Astralis get two into the A site. And despite the early damage being inflicted, they're all sitting there on half health, but the, the bomb goes down all the same. And it's not a retake you can win with MP9s. This is a reluctant acceptance of their fate here. They couldn't even get an AK from Device because Magus picked that up due to the fact that he didn't get a loss bonus. So True. somehow it worked out for Astralis as it looks like they'll keep four alive. If you're Carrigan and you're frozen, you might want to stay up close and personal just to make sure that a few of them do go down with the bomb here, make them have to reinvest. I know it won't matter that you're up against the 15th, but if they go in with any emissions within their buy, that might be the difference between winning or losing a round. There's some damage from Carrigan. How much more can he get? Continuing forward, good for the stats, but... Eventually taken out by Glaive. Bomb goes off. Oh, plans are different. Okay, I thought it was a default plan. That would have hurt. Astralis 15, Mouseports 3 is the story of Inferno. Right back on the horse after such an intense nuke. I thought we were destined for a third map to remember. I'm sure Astralis will. Mouseports going to want to forget it. Looking to finish off the night. Closing in on 10 p.m. Astralis one round away, and they have got plenty to play with. Any sort of toys they can possibly muster, the CTs drag themselves to the site. Good luck, Mouse. Yeah, here we go. Let's see. Chris is about to pick too. Well, down to 15. The round just got harder. The difficulty level turned up now. Yeah, it's on 11. And Bemis is in a position to get, well, I was going to say, a frag. He's actually been molotov off before that could even manifest. And now Glaive continues to deny Brackets control single-handedly. Magic's doing the same over at Banana. You've got a passive mouse sports, and I'm sure you're not surprised to find that out. They've done this with ease here, Astralis. They've got everything they need. The bomb is at T-stairs, but there's plenty of time on the clock, and they have enough utility to go for whatever execute they please. Device now tucked in. He'll heal rotations through the speedway. And the indications from Astralis is we're heading A. Smoke towards Pit. They continue forward a minute on the clock at this juncture and still no clear indication where they want to finish. We saw some mad rounds with Ents versus Astralis where they were back and forth as you like. That's right. Doto nearly with the crazy 1v4. Now Jessica's going to grab himself the bomb. So is it B? One would assume. Now is actually joining the, the pack at A. So they're just going to park device on this B site. And like you can see he's got a Molotov and a smoke. So he's going to start throwing that stuff out. He's even got a lineup, has he? Yeah, love to see it. Frozen's going to be forced off of that one. Oh, it's not quite as good as it should have been, but it is enough to certainly show the presence. Carrigan hasn't moved. And so the A hit's coming in and the CTs are in the right place. This time, however, Carrigan's gone down early. Rock's playing anti-flash. He's holding the line perfectly, looking for the rifle upgrade. That's the frags they wanted to avoid, though. Dupree and Glaive will be seeing the bomb down. In the last few seconds to spare, I think four on the clock as that one is extended. Device tickled out by Frozen and now, oof, lovely. They've started off this 2v3 with the necessary first, but it, all it takes is clay. And this is done. Astralis, that's dominance. That's huge. A 16 to 3 thrashing.